Were Neanderthals the first Europeans to conquer the seas? Neanderthal seafaring and coastal exploitation of marine resources is a topic that has garnered increased attention in recent years, as archaeological evidence continues to reveal the complexity and adaptability of Neanderthals. While traditionally perceived as primarily land-based hunter-gatherers, new research suggests that Neanderthals may have had the capacity for maritime activities, potentially even travelling between islands using simple watercraft. This video explores the scientific studies supporting the hypothesis of Neanderthal seafaring. We also examine the feasibility of Neanderthals constructing dugout canoes using basic tools like stone hand axes. Based on the evidence that Neanderthals made spears out of finely crafted stone points attached to precision-engineered wooden shafts using a synthetically manufactured birch tar glue, it is reasonable to speculate that Neanderthals had the capacity to carve dugout canoes out of driftwood logs, waterproof them, and craft paddles to propel the boats. Driftwood is really the key to understanding ancient seafaring, because large driftwood is relatively easy to convert into a boat. Fishing is a relatively safer lifestyle than hunting land-based prey, where you also have to be concerned with large predators, such as hyenas and wolves. Also, their ability to coordinate hunts of large, dangerous animals, including cave bears and woolly rhinos, suggests they had the planning ability and fearlessness to go to sea. Indeed, a growing body of genetic and physical evidence of Neanderthal's similarity to Homo sapiens has led some researchers to propose that Neanderthals should be classified as an extinct archaic subspecies of Homo sapiens, called Homo sapiens neanderthalensis. Therefore, almost anything that early Homo sapiens could do, the Neanderthals likely also could accomplish. Evidence of Neanderthal coastal exploitation dates back to the Middle Paleolithic, roughly 300,000 to 40,000 years ago. Neanderthals occupied coastal regions across Europe and the Mediterranean, where they likely took advantage of marine resources, including fish, shellfish and sea mammals. Archaeological sites have revealed various aspects of Neanderthal diets, and coastal sites in particular indicate that marine exploitation played a role in their subsistence strategies. Northern Europe presents an intriguing area for studying Neanderthal coastal adaptation. Evidence from Scandinavia and the North Sea suggests that Neanderthals occupied these coastal regions during interglacial periods when the climate was more temperate. Sites along the North Sea coast, such as in Denmark and Germany, have produced evidence of Neanderthals exploiting coastal resources, including fish and seals. The possibility of using watercraft to navigate rivers, estuaries, and perhaps even coastal routes in this region would have facilitated their movement and access to a broader range of resources. While direct evidence of Neanderthal watercraft is lacking, their occupation of coastal sites, sometimes separated by bodies of water, suggests that they could have developed ways to cross short distances at sea. Dugout canoes made from hollowed-out logs might have been feasible, especially given the abundance of ancient driftwood that could be easily carved with simple tools like stone hand axes. The discovery of Neanderthal stone tools in Denmark has added intriguing insights into the extent of Neanderthal occupation and behaviour in northern Europe. While traditionally associated with regions further south, such as France, Spain and Germany, Neanderthals also inhabited areas near the North Sea coast and possibly as far north as Scandinavia, including Denmark. Indeed, archaeological evidence from sites in Denmark suggests that Neanderthals were present during warmer interglacial periods when the climate was more hospitable. One of the most significant finds comes from a Danish site, where researchers discovered Musterian tools, a type of stone tool industry associated with Neanderthals. In addition to their use on land, Neanderthal tools found in Doggerland hint at the possibility of coastal resource exploitation. Sites near ancient coastlines, which are now submerged or heavily altered due to rising sea levels since the last glacial maximum, have revealed flint artifacts and evidence of hunting and butchering activities. For example, findings from submerged landscapes off the Danish coast part of the broader North Sea region known as Doggerland, suggests that Neanderthals may have hunted seals, fish, and other marine animals. These coastal activities imply that they were not solely focused on terrestrial hunting, but also took advantage of rich marine ecosystems. 
Doggerland, a now submerged landmass that once connected the British Isles to mainland Europe, is a crucial area for understanding Neanderthal coastal adaptations. During periods of lower sea levels, this area was a vast, habitable plain, teeming with game and resources, and Neanderthals likely roamed across it. As sea levels rose, parts of Doggerland were submerged, creating new coastal environments that Neanderthals could exploit. Although direct evidence of seafaring in this region has not been found, the need to cross water barriers or navigate coastal environments might have encouraged Neanderthals to develop basic forms of watercraft. Given the extensive coastlines of Doggerland, Denmark and surrounding areas, it is plausible that Neanderthals had some form of watercraft or used natural materials like driftwood to aid in crossing rivers and estuaries. The stone tools found in Denmark and elsewhere are an example of Neanderthals' sophisticated understanding of materials and tool-making techniques. Flint, a material abundantly available in coastal regions, was shaped into sharp tools that could be used for cutting, scraping, and possibly carving wood. Since Neanderthals were skilled at manipulating natural materials like wood and stone, it is feasible that they could have extended these skills to the construction of simple watercraft, such as dugout canoes. Indeed, boat crafting would be a natural outcome of their intimate arboreal knowledge. The hypothesis that Neanderthals used dugout canoes to navigate coastal waters gained some support from their known ability to plan and execute complex tasks, as evidenced by their tool-making technique. Neanderthals' use of this technique suggests they were capable of forward planning and abstract thinking, qualities that would be essential for constructing and using watercraft. The idea that Neanderthals could have built dugout canoes using stone hand axes is plausible, given their known skills in tool-making and resource utilization. Hand axes are versatile tools that could be used for chopping, carving, and hollowing out logs. These tools have been found at various Neanderthal sites, and their design suggests they were effective for processing wood. The process of constructing a dugout canoe would involve selecting an appropriate log, hollowing it out, and shaping it to improve buoyancy and stability. Large driftwood, which was plentiful along ancient coastlines, could have been particularly useful as it would already be partially weathered and easier to carve. The relative simplicity of a dugout canoe design makes it a realistic option for Neanderthals, who had the physical ability and tool-making capabilities to complete such a task. Dugout canoes are much more suitable for seafaring than a raft, which would be very difficult to propel and steer. In fact, experimental archaeology has played a role in exploring how Neanderthals might have built and used watercraft. Researchers have attempted to recreate the process of making dugout canoes using tools similar to those available to Neanderthals. These experiments demonstrate that with patience and skill, it is possible to hollow out a log using stone tools. Such experiments also show that dugout canoes can be surprisingly durable and seaworthy. In ancient Europe, the choice of tree species for constructing dugout boats would have depended on several factors, including the tree's size, wood density, workability, and availability in a particular region. Based on historical and archaeological evidence, several types of trees were commonly used for making dugout boats, including oak, linden, elm, pine, ash, poplar, and willow. The ease with which a tree could be carved would have been important, especially when using stone tools. Softer woods would have been easier to work with, while harder woods required more effort but offered greater durability. Given all these factors, pine would have been the most likely tree used for driftwood boats because it is soft, the trunks are large and straight, and it is very abundant as driftwood. Pine can also be treated to enhance its resistance to salt water, but untreated pine would not last long in marine environments. Pitch pine, with its higher resin content, was historically used for shipbuilding because the resin helped protect the wood from rot. While no direct evidence of Neanderthal watercraft has been found, the feasibility of constructing dugout canoes using stone hand axes cannot be dismissed. The continued study of coastal and underwater archaeological sites combined with experimental approaches may yet provide more concrete evidence of Neanderthal seafaring capabilities. Until then, the hypothesis remains an intriguing possibility 
that challenges our understanding of Neanderthal behavior and adaptability. Another example is the site of Gibraltar, where remains of mollusks, fish, and even dolphins and seals were found, suggesting that Neanderthals were not just opportunistic foragers, but actively sought out marine resources. Similar findings at coastal sites in Spain and Italy have revealed evidence of shellfish consumption, and cut marks on bones suggest they were butchering marine mammals. This behavior demonstrates not only their adaptability to different environments, but also a degree of planning and knowledge about their surroundings. The idea that Neanderthals were capable of seafaring gained traction with discoveries on the Mediterranean island of Crete. Crete has been isolated from the mainland for over five million years, so the presence of pre-Homo sapiens artifacts on the island implies that these ancient humans had the capability to travel across water. Stone tools, including hand axes and other implements similar to those used by Neanderthals, were discovered. These artifacts were dated to around 130,000 years ago, a period during which Neanderthals were the primary hominins in Europe and the Near East. The implications of these findings are significant. If Neanderthals were responsible for these tools, they must have been able to cross at least 40 kilometers of open sea to reach Crete suggesting that they had the knowledge and skills and the balls necessary to build some form of watercraft. While no direct evidence of Neanderthal boats has been found, the tools imply they were capable of complex tasks, such as crafting and potentially even navigation. The absence of large predators on Crete could have made it an attractive location for Neanderthals, suggesting that they may have actively sought out such environments. This would indicate not just opportunistic exploitation of marine resources, but deliberate exploration and navigation. Archaeologists argue that the ability to move between islands in the Mediterranean would have required both an understanding of the marine environment and a means of crossing it, such as dugout canoes. Scientists found evidence for an intensive reliance on seafood at a Neanderthal site in southern Portugal. Neanderthals living between 106,000 and 86,000 years ago at the cave of Figueira, Brava were eating mussels, crab and fish, including sharks, eels and seabirds, dolphins and seals. The idea of Neanderthals hunting sharks may sound surprising, but evidence suggests that Neanderthals had a more complex relationship with marine environments than previously believed. Among the marine life found at the Portuguese site were species of bream, conga eels and sea bass, suggesting that Neanderthals had access to coastal waters where these fish lived. This finding is significant because it indicates that Neanderthals were capable of fishing or catching these creatures, possibly by wading into shallow waters using traps or even spearing them. Although direct evidence of shark hunting has not been definitively proven, there are indications that Neanderthals had the skills and adaptability to exploit a variety of marine resources and it is conceivable that they may have had encounters with sharks. The ancient sea was teeming with fish and sharks, something we can hardly conceive of today. Sharks are predators that frequent coastal waters, and it is possible that Neanderthals could have encountered them, especially in shallow bays or estuaries where sharks might come to hunt smaller fish. If Neanderthals were already proficient at spearing fish or using other methods to catch marine animals, they could have potentially attempted to catch smaller, less dangerous sharks, or scavenged on dead sharks that washed ashore. The technology available to Neanderthals, such as stone-tipped spears, would have been effective in hunting or defending against marine predators. Although shark hunting requires considerable skill and knowledge, it is not beyond the realm of possibility that Neanderthals could have adapted their hunting techniques to include smaller sharks if they were a part of the coastal ecosystem they inhabited. In traditional societies, hunting or catching sharks, knowledge of shark behavior, and similar strategies could have been within the capacity of Neanderthal communities, especially if they had boats at their disposal. The idea of Neanderthals hunting sharks raises questions about their maritime capabilities and understanding of marine ecosystems. Neanderthals were known to inhabit coastal areas, and their presence at sites along the coast of Portugal suggests that they were adept at exploiting the rich marine environments. If they had access to boats, even simple craft made from driftwood, 
it could have extended their ability to exploit deeper waters where larger marine animals, including sharks, are found. The presence of fish remains and marine mammals like dolphins and seals at Neanderthal sites indicates that they were not strangers to the sea. However, it is challenging to determine the exact methods they used to acquire these animals. Fishing with nets or hooks has not been confirmed for Neanderthals, but they may have used spears or traps, as evidenced by their tool-making skills. Given that shark hunting can be dangerous, Neanderthals would need to have a deep understanding of shark behavior and the ocean environment, as well as the ability to cooperate in groups to effectively hunt or fend off sharks. While there is no direct evidence that Neanderthals hunted sharks, their known adaptability and marine resource exploitation suggest that they were capable of complex behaviours that might have included interactions with marine predators. The archaeological sites in Portugal provide a glimpse into Neanderthal coastal life, showing that they had access to a diverse range of marine resources, from fish to shellfish and marine mammals. If Neanderthals had the knowledge to recognize favorable weather conditions and understand ocean currents, they could potentially have navigated short distances across coastal waters or between nearby islands. This capability would have allowed them to exploit a wider range of resources and move more freely within their territories. The evidence for Neanderthal seafaring remains largely circumstantial, but it paints a picture of a species that was more adaptable and versatile than traditionally thought. And with that tantalizing statement, we leave you to ponder the mysteries of our shared human history. And before you go, please share, comment, and check out the other videos on our channel. Thank you, and take care.